Elevation of Consciousness. Seven months ago he published an article called Universe, Solar System and Astrology, and the other one, about astrology. For those who have not seen them, I suggest you do, since they are related to what follows. Although someone may question what the functioning of the human being and the universe has to do with astrology, we must make clear that the understanding of how these works, is the basis of astrology. Those who consider that astrology is a matter of sorcerers or esotericism, I ask you to reconsider your ideas, since meteorology's forecasts are not very different in its essence. The Egyptians related the floods of the Nile River according to the movements of the Syrian star. Galileo, Torricelli, Pascal, and Descartes, as if to mention some well-known names, did their research related to variations in atmospheric conditions but it was not until the early 1900s, when meteorology was consolidated as such, and came to be managed by the military, since it was considered classified information, very valuable in military campaigns against an enemy. Astrology, for its part, although it is recorded that it has existed for 4,000 years, is in question its scientific validity today, beyond the proven evidence available. In the article presented months ago, we talked about the similarity of the functioning of the universe and the human body, given the information obtained by the space probes sent out of our solar system. In this opportunity, we are going to address the place of the human being in the universe. Without going into the religious aspect, the vast majority of people believe that there is an existence after death, that there is a purpose in things, and that both we and the vastness of the universe, are not just the product of a cosmic accident. If you are one of the people who think that getting up every day, having breakfast, going to work, lunch, watching Netflix and going to sleep, to start the same cycle again the next day, I suggest you not continue. You will not be interested in the subject. On the other hand, if you are part of the rest that thinks that, there is something more than what we can see, feel, taste or that some device can measure, this article may interest you. What is proposed will not reveal anything new, but will put into context certain topics that today, due to the level of information we handle, can be understood. Fifty years ago, this information was limited only to a smaller group of free thinkers. From the explanations in the aforementioned articles, it is clear that astrology is to be used only on planet Earth. Although each planet, the moon or asteroids in the solar system has its particular characteristic given its energy, this does not mean that there cannot be another astrology based on Mars, Venus or Jupiter, as to mention other planets, as well as in any other solar system in the universe. We know that M-type planets are those that, due to their characteristics, could host human life, and hundreds, if not thousands, have been found, but it must be understood that everything is relative. Depending on where the planet is located, and to the system that it belongs to, it will depend the influence it receives. This concept is clear at Earth's level, when you can go for your birthday anywhere on the planet, and by doing that you can change the energies that will influence that solar year. The chart done for each particular birthday is called solar return, and it is made based on the original natal chart and where the birthday happens. Let's put the human being in perspective of the Earth and the universe. If an astronaut after being on the space station for a few months needs months of treatment and exercises to return to having the same bone and muscle structure, which he lost while in space, let's think for a minute a human being inhabiting the planet Mars, for example. The trip to Mars could take between 6 and 9 months depending on when the trip begins. After that period, in what physical conditions would the astronaut arrive? Suppose that mentally everything works properly, what would happen to the physical part of the astronaut? Moreover, in this regard, we are not only referring to the deterioration given the duration of the journey through space, but also, from the astrological point of view. Being on Mars, astrology should be Mars-centered and Earth would become a planet along with the others. The Earth's moon would cease to have an influence on the human body, which we know regulates different systems of the body, and especially in women, the hormonal cycle for procreation. How would the physical cycles of the human body be affected by the new planetary influence? 
Being able to travel to the stars has always been something that has captured the imagination of humanity, and has inspired Hollywood in countless series and movies on the subject. From Star Trek, trips to the Moon, Mars and other planets, to Interstellar, where the possibility of a parallel reality is presented. Although we perceive time as linear, it is actually circular. Astrology demonstrates this through the cycles of each of the celestial bodies that go from 28 days and hours with the Moon, to more than 140 years with Pluto. Each cycle has a purpose, not like the mouse's wheel where it turns and turns, and is always in the same place. The cycles measured by astrology never repeat an exact position considering all the heavenly bodies. The great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn that will occur in December 2020, is given to one degree of orb, while the similar previous one occurred in the 1600s, to two degrees of orb, but with the other celestial bodies in different positions. This gives us a clear idea of the complexity of the things that influence us on a daily basis, since each cycle never will be exactly as the previous one. This means that although the cycles are repeated, they never occur with the same astrological characteristics, and if we add to this, that the person's state and development between one cycle and another changes, regardless of whether the cycle could be similar, the person is not. This considering that everything happens at Earth's level, and in this, we do not even consider the space station. In the movie Interstellar, the protagonist travels through a wormhole and into another dimension of time. While days pass for him, years have passed on Earth, to the point that when he can return, he finds his daughter on her deathbed, older than what his grandmother could be. Here we pause, since we are going to enter the second topic that concerns us, and that is not easy to explain. Astrology aims to help humans to evolve on this plane. It is a tool, it is a GPS of life if you want to see it that way. The question is for what? Let us start with the harsh reality that we are born and die alone. In other words, there may have been many people around the mother at the time of birth, but the one who was born did not share his birth experience with those present, they only witnessed the event. The same happens with the moment of death, people who will witness the event can surround you, but the person who departs, goes alone. We are unique and independent beings in this regard. From birth to death. Astrology marks an evolutionary path that will be marked by different energies that are manifested by the celestial aspects in regards to the natal chart, and the person will have the possibility to act as he or she pleases in each of those moments. That is, if a piece of cake is on the table, it is their decision that determines whether to eat it or not. This is the case with every act during our lifetime, from the time we have consciousness to death. And what happens after death? There is enough information available about near-death experiences and what happened, as well as communications with other entities or types of energies that may or may not have been on the earth plane. The Catholic Church and other religions speak of heavenly hierarchies. Jesus is the Son of God, and even in that, there is a hierarchy or level, but what does that mean? It just represents that there are different levels of evolved consciousness at the earth level as well as at levels that we do not perceive with our five senses. We have to remember that we are talking about the universe, we have to put aside our ego in order to understand its immensity and complexity. The film Interstellar, which is based on known scientific information, when posing the time reality that exists between the earth plane and other planes, shows clearly that the universal times are not the same as the earthly times. At this point we return to the paradox that occurs with space travel and its consequences. Going back to astrology and our application, we empirically know that time on Earth is limited by two parallels which are birth and death. It has to be clear that we are on this plane to evolve, and that means experiencing life and making the best decisions in our actions both towards ourselves and towards others. The others not only refers to people, but everything around us. While this may sound like utopian thinking, it is a reality, and that is what it is all about when we say evolution. We are talking about evolution of consciousness. All the feelings we generate are energy, just like the energies generated by the celestial stars and the aspects with our natal chart. The first objective of our evolution path is to understand and manage our feelings. There are both positive and negative feelings. 
In general, negative feelings are those that tend to last longer. Speaking of time, doesn't it seem that time goes faster when you are having a good time, and it seems that time stops or goes slower when you are not comfortable or having problems? As we know, time is the same, and then, why that happens? The main effort when working on one's evolution should be focus on the management of feelings. Not to the point of becoming an automaton, but by having control both on the moments of euphoria as well as those of sorrow. Astrology can anticipate when a period of low vibration is coming, and this can allows better managing of that energy. We are beings with a high level of consciousness, but this natural state can be developed or left in its raw state, the key is to develop it in the best possible way. The development can only be achieved with practice, with small exercises and by being constant. As we perfect our methods, most of the time based on trial and error, since there is no magic solution, we can evolve in consciousness on this plane. As we evolve, time will no longer be a factor in our life. While this sounds strange, it is just that. When certain level of evolution has been reached, time is no longer seen as a dominant factor in life. It is no longer a conditioning factor. Managing our feelings leads to detachment from things that condition us, and do not allow progress in our personal development. The person is not what he owns, each of us is much more than that, although we are indoctrinated that we are valued based on our material possessions. If we think that as a species we are going to be successful by being able to live on another planet or solar system, that we are going to be superior simply by traveling to space, we should stop and look at things from another point of view. If we did not develop ourselves and our civilization to certain level of consciousness before we take our civilization to another planet, we would carry with us the same problems that we have today on Earth. What do you think of the level of consciousness of the organizations or people who are taking the lead on space exploration at this time? If we have to look for other worlds because we have made a dump of ours, with that same level of consciousness, we will repeat the same mistake wherever we go. It not a matter of a place, it is a matter of consciousness. The universe is perfect, including the laws that govern it. In the same way that our existence can be compromised on earth for having surpassed all the coherence parameters that exist, in the same way, any extraterrestrial adventure will fail. The only solution to the present dilemma is not to look for a solution to our problems by moving out of where we are, but by working towards solving all the problems that we have created. We got here by adopting a frivolous egocentrism and devoid of any ethical and moral value in our actions, at the personal or global levels. Astrology pointed out that the present crisis was going to happen, let us think outside the box. We cannot solve our problems using the same structures and tools that got us here in the first place. 